this mining rig was almost the death of me. And this is a, currently it's an 8x Intel Arc A380 rig. And it's been a real struggle. So I first started building this, uh, what, today's Monday, or today's Tuesday. I started this on Thursday of last week. And it's pretty much been non-stop. I'm troubleshooting, trying to figure out what the issue was. Uh, several weeks ago, I built and I put out a video on hash rates on the A750 and A380. And with that, I had one A750 and one A380 in a machine plugged directly on the uh, X16 slots on an ATX motherboard. No problem at all. Everything worked fine. And so I was like, great, let's move it to an open airframe. And I did that. I moved everything to an open airframe on risers and worked fine. So I ordered a whole case of A380s. Came in, started building the rig, got everything built, and went to boot it up. No video. So I'm starting to go through some motions and uh, figuring everything out. Uh, you do need resizable bar installed. So I I went through three different motherboards, updated all of them to latest bias, enabled resizable bar. Still no video coming out of the cards. And then if I plugged one in directly on the X16 slot, I got video. Or if I put one A750 on and then added A380s, it seemed to be working. Days later, troubleshooting, and for whatever reason, I started switching out risers and I found out the problem was actually with the risers. And not that they're bad risers, but the Intel Arc lineup requires a kind of a rewrite back to the motherboard during boot up. And so a lot of times what you'll notice is when you're running an open air rig, if you look at it, once you turn it on, if you see your fans are spinning 100% and they're never kind of shutting off during that boot phase, that means that the riser itself isn't reporting back information to the motherboard during boot. And what I found was 90% of my risers didn't do this. And what I ended up figuring out was one specific riser worked, shut them off. When I used that riser, everything worked fine. Unfortunately, I only had four of those risers, and they are a quite outdated riser. And so I went on Amazon and I ordered basically one of every riser version, trying to figure out ones that would work. And I went through a massive test, tested all the risers, and came to the conclusion that there are only two risers, at least in my tests, that work with this. Now, full disclaimer, I did not try GPU risers risers. They may or may not work. Uh, I don't have any of those risers. So uh, I was trying to get this rig set up and trying to figure out what risers would actually work. So these are the specific cards we're running. They're the, AI, the ASRock Challenger. Uh, these are the single fan. A380s. These are probably the most popular A380s and the cheapest there are. Uh, when I picked up all these cards, they were around 119 each on Newegg. So let's talk about the risers I went through. First started off with this. This is actually my go-to riser. And the reason is it's thin. And so I can run this specific frame. You can fit, you can actually fit 10 GPUs in this frame. Uh, right now I have eight. I suddenly plug two more in. But uh, essentially all my rigs are 10 card rigs as long as they have substantial cooling. And so with these, it's a lot easier to put in and not have it hitting the sides or not having cards touching each other. And so this has always kind of been my go-to riser for the longest time. And this is version 00C, 006C. These do not work. 
they don't have the rewrite back mechanism. Uh, moving on to another riser that I tried was actually this one, which this one's kind of weird. It is version F100, and it's it's significantly wider as you can see. Uh, this also did not work. Moving on, uh, this is version 009C. This did not work. And as you can see, this is um, very similar to like the GPU risers risers, except it's in black. Um, it's got you know a lot of that enhanced functionality, a substantial amount of capacitors. Um, it also has a five volt regulator on board. Uh, however, this did not work. And when I say these don't work, they don't have that right back mechanism. So it is powering the card. It will work with any other GPU, it just won't work with these specific GPUs. And another one that we tried is version 009S. This also did not work. Moving on to the two that did work. This is one of the older ones I had, and I've been running my P106s on these for the longest time. Uh, these do work great. Uh, these are small little four capacitor uh, units. However, they've never failed me. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened, whether it was you know when I was moving from Ohio to Tennessee or what, but I managed to lose a bunch of these. And so I only had four of these. Obviously can't build a card rig with only four. And so I had to hunt for uh, an alternative. And this is version 007C. Now I did find these on eBay. There's actually even a guy that's selling them uh, about 10 minutes from where I live, but he was asking like 15 to $20 per riser. And so I had a backup plan if nothing on Amazon would work. However, came across these. Now they are white like the GPU risers riser, uh, but if you look at the version, it is version 10X. These were the only ones that I found that were available on Amazon that did work. And they were relatively cheap. I think it was only like $20 for a six pack uh, right now. So these are working great. Uh, I actually have eight of these in here right now. And then I'll be adding two more cards. So finally, everything is working. And the other big challenge I was having is once I got the risers, once I got things booted up, I was running into issues in Windows. I was able to, if I had a monitor hooked up to it, did everything directly on the rig, it was kind of okay, it was usable. However, once I start, tried to start RDPing into the machine, it would basically hang and it would take a couple hours, no lie, a couple hours for the RDP session to actually establish and log in. Once it was logged in, it was still kind of sluggish. Uh, I was able to mine with it. Uh, however, what happened recently, it, over the past couple days, is MMP OS, which is another mining OS that's been around for a while, they added Linux support, or they've added Intel support to their mining OS. So I went ahead and I flashed it to a USB drive Right now it is running. It is hashing away on Dynex. We are getting around 1.17 uh, kilohashes per second on Dynex. And each of the cards is using around 50 watts. So we're mining really good right now. This will give me kind of a, you know, uh, interim solution until HiveOS ad support. Unfortunately, because we are using MMPOS, I can't mine with the CPU and the GPUs at the same time. So right now I'm rocking a 5950X that is basically just sitting idle, it's really not doing anything. But what we're looking at here is we've got uh, two HP 1200 watt power supplies. I run HP 1200 watts in everything that I do. Uh, so we've got a ZSX board, 
plus an X11 breakout board with a sync cable between the two. We're running two uh, four by connectors for the risers. We've got uh, this specific motherboard is a B450 Tomahawk. We've got the 5950X in it. We have a low profile Noctua tower cooler that sits just right under the GPUs. We've got eight A380s, which will be 10 very shortly. Uh, we've got 10 cooling fans, which is way overkill. These cards run super cool. You can't even really feel any heat coming off of them. Uh, it's very minimal. And we are currently pulling exactly 500 watts at the wall. So this is currently hashing. We're looking at 500. I've seen it fluctuate between 490 and 500 uh, with the eight cards. And if you hop on hashrate.no, what you'll notice is they have a setup similar to this slotted at 600 just for the GPUs. They anticipate you know, 600 watts for the cards. However, we're getting substantially lower than that. Um, one thing with the A380 is there are tuning options in MMPOS to adjust the core clock and to also adjust the power limit. However, what I noticed is neither of those would actually apply to the card. It would try to apply it, it really wouldn't apply it, and it would just get stuck in a loop trying to apply it over and over again. It didn't cause the rig to crash or anything. It just, the cards are almost acting like, um, like lower end um, NVIDIA workstation cards. Like the T400 that you could try to set the clocks, but basically the core clock wasn't writable. And so it basically just fails trying to write it. That's what it seems like it's happening on the A380s. I haven't had time yet to build an A750 rig, which I do want to do. I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to actually run eight of these cards uh, stable in an environment before I go all out with a 750 rig. But we do have it up and running. Uh, we've got three open PCIe slots still, so we'll be able to slot in two more cards there. And then uh, the rig will pretty much be finished. Uh, right now I am running parallel minor power cables. Eventually I do want to swap those out. I'll probably go either chain critical or veteran minor. We'll see. Uh, the power draw is very low, so they're not heating up at all. Uh, but just from a cable management standpoint, uh, I'd like to get some braided cables. Currently I am at five cents electric. And so this rig's actually pretty profitable for me right now. Um, it is on Dynex. I believe Alethium is the second most profitable coin. Uh, but right now we're sitting at, I think just under $2 a day profit on this rig. So it's actually pretty good. It's pretty much on par with like my 1660 Ti rig and a little bit less than my A2000 rig. So right now it is sitting pretty good. Uh, it's nice and cool. Uh, very happy. I'm so happy that it's finally up and running. It is hashing on MMPOS, which I haven't used MMPOS since like 2017, 2018 timeframe. Uh, however, their UI pretty much still looks the same. Uh, it's somewhat dated. And they do essentially charge you like per GPU instead of per rig. But they give you, basically they give you eight credits a day. Meaning you can run eight GPUs for free uh, per day. And that is kind of time based. So once I add two more, then we will begin paying for this. However, I'm really hopeful that Hive OS is going to add support soon because uh, I would like to get the system moved over to HiveOS so that it's managed with the rest of my rigs. However, right now it is up and running. Super happy about that and I am content to leave it as is. So we're actually going to be moving this to its final resting place and plug it in and just let it hash away on Dynax. Uh, these cards are really good on Dynex, especially compared to the A750. Uh, from a performance ratio standpoint, for the price, they are phenomenal cards on 
Dynex as compared to a lot of other uh, cards. And I am quite happy with the power consumption. Uh, when I initially set this up, I thought they were going to pull full 75 watts on Dynex the whole time. But they are actually only pulling uh, around 50-ish. So, nice to see there.